Choosing Family by Ginny Rules 27, Chapter 30. Already halfway through, guys. Philip crawled into bed and gently kissed the top of his wife's head. It had been a trying time for them all, but somehow they'd bounced back. In all honesty, Philip had been worried about Aurora first. She had almost clung to Arabella at first, as if trying to make up for the fact that she had been unable to bond with Audrey when she had first been born. Thank God for Claudine. If it hadn't been for her, I don't think Aurora would have slept at all, he thought as he turned off the light and sat at his bedside table. Claudine loves Arabella more than I think Aurora does. Or Phil, in all honesty. Or even me. It... I know we can never replace Audrey, but having Claudine here is... is almost like having another daughter. It's hard to believe it's almost been a year since Arabella was born, isn't it? Aurora said softly. That's right. Philip nodded, trying to look at her. Turning to look at her. She's what? Eleven months? Uh-huh. Aurora said with a slightly sad smile. We... We should think about setting up a party and a christening for her. Are you sure? Philip asked. I know. I know that christenings aren't usually well received by your family. Aurora sighed. I know. But if she could get a gift that would help her later in life, that would be worth it. Something better than beauty and song, at the very least. And I was thinking we should at least set up a video conference with Audrey. You were? I know she made her choices, and I know we're never going to get a chance to hold our daughter again. Aurora said, her voice soft. But she's still our daughter, Philip. She's still my little girl who used to beg to go to Fairy Cottage and feed the woodland animals. Even if she called them all bunnies and birdies. Even if she couldn't hold Ari, she should at least get to see her. Philip nodded, but a crash in the distance caused both of them to pause and look towards the baby monitor. Was, was Claudine coming over? Aurora asked as she sat up. She would have told us. And she wouldn't have visited this late. She knows how I feel about her driving at night. Philip said. That was one of the first rules he had instituted when he'd started teaching Claudine how to drive. No more than one person in the car when she was driving. Not counting, of course, him, Aurora, Phil and Arabella. And no driving in the dead of night. At least, not when she was first starting out. That had also been a reason for his insistence on getting her a brand new car. He used cars around the risk of breaking down more easily. Plus, there was no guarantee on maintenance. However, Claudine had insisted on a used car. She claimed it didn't make sense to get a new one when there were perfectly good pre-owned cars out there. In the end, it had been Aurora who had come up with an acceptable compromise. They would get a pre-owned car, but it could not be older than three years and had to be expected frequently. If... If that's over the baby monitor, they could be in Arabella's room, Aurora whispered. Philip. I know. Philip nodded, getting out of bed and grabbing his sword. He knew he probably wasn't a particularly imposing presence in his pyjamas, but he didn't care. There wasn't enough time for them to call the guards, after all. And they could divide and conquer. You go check on Phil. Take one of the swords to protect yourself. And the frying pan. Aurora rolled her eyes. Just because Eugene taught me how to spar using a frying pan does not mean it's a practical weapon. Just take it, Philip told her. I'm going to chuck on Arabella. Aurora nodded, and the two split off. Philip quickly made his way up to the, his granddaughter's nursery. Upon arrival, he had to pause, as a sight that could only have come from out of his nightmares was before him. Freddy was in his castle. In his granddaughter's nursery. Step away from my granddaughter. Philip growled, drawing his sword and pointing it at Freddy. You took my daughter away from me. But you'll touch my granddaughter over my dead body. That's my daughter. Freddy growled as Philip walked up, 
slipping his body between the crib and Freddy. You honestly are going to keep a father from his daughter? Guess you Baradon folks aren't the kind-hearted as you claim. You are the donor who helped create Arabella, but that's it. You are not her father. You have no right to her, Philip growled, pushing Freddy back from the crib. Without me, she wouldn't even be here. I have the right to see my daughter. If I was Audrey, would you be keeping me from her? Or is it just because I'm from the Isle? Freddy snarled. What do you even want with her anyway? You don't want to see her. It's more like you just want to kidnap her and use her. All she is to you is a pawn. Philip shot back. You sent Audrey to the Isle without getting to hold her daughter. I'm rectifying that, Freddy told her. And you don't know me. Don't presume to know what I'm thinking. I know you better than you think. Philip growled. Freddy smirked. Oh, do you? Then you must already know that Audrey's pregnant again. Philip froze. What? Oh, was that a shock to you, your highness? Well, then I guess you truly don't know me like you think. Freddy taunted. Baradon can't take what's mine and expect me to just sit back and take it. I'm taking my daughter to see her mother and we'll raise her to be the heir to our rule and you can't stop me. You'll have to get through me first if you want any prayer of touching my granddaughter. Philip told him, raising his sword so that it pressed lightly against Freddy's stomach. I faced off against Maleficent in her dragon form, kid. I'm not scared of you. You won't get the chance to touch another member of my family again. Behind him, Arabella began to whimper as she could feel the tension in the room grow. It's okay, Ari, Philip said gently, all the while continuing to glare at Freddy. The mean man was just leaving. I'm not going anywhere without her. It's either you leave here, empty-handed, but alive, or Lord Hades gets a new soul for the underworld. Either way, you won't leave here with her. Honestly, with all you've done, your death is more than warranted. Threatening the life of the man who gave you your granddaughter? Oh my, and you call yourselves the good guys. Freddy scoffed. He's better off than you, Freddy. Now do as he said and back away from Arabella's crib. Mal's voice growled from the doorway, and both of them turned to look at her. I'm not leaving here without my daughter, Mal. Freddy growled. It'll be a cold day in the underworld before anyone lets you touch that little girl. What? You really thought you and Audrey could break out of the aisle once again, and we wouldn't know about it? Carlos modified the baby monitors so that if your voice or Audrey's was heard over it, an alert was sent to Ben. We knew you'd try something at some point. Ma snarled as a pack of guards moved to stand behind her. You act like a father wanting to have his little girl is a crime, Mal. Especially seeing as you refuse to let Audrey hold her, Freddy snarled. What are you even doing here anyway? Aren't you supposed to be off playing queen? Did it ever occur to you that all I might want to do is hold my daughter? You can want to tell that until the cows come home, Freddy. That doesn't mean you're going to do it, Mal snarled back at him, and I'm sure Ben would agree that you've used up your last chance. Philip, would you like to take care of him now? Or would you like a front row seat when he becomes Dragon Zhao? Lady Mal, please feel free to see to him personally, Philip said. I'd rather Ari not see this. Of course, Mal nodded as the guards quickly moved to grab Freddy. I hope she's able to go back to sleep without much trouble. Me too. Philip nodded as he sheathed his sword and picked up Arabella. Papa, she said softly, burrowing into Philip's chest. It's okay, baby girl. 
I'm here. Grandpapa's got you. I'll never let anyone hurt you. Philip could. You're not her father! Freddy shouted as he struggled against the guard's grip. I'm her father! What, are you going to raise her as your precious son's sister? Philip opened his mouth and then froze once more. Philip, Lady Mel, do you... Phil's okay, Aurora said as she walked up, her voice shaky. Audrey, I went into Phil's room to see a dagger in his shoulder and Audrey prepared to throw another one right at him. You were right about that frying pan coming in handy. Mel growled and turned to face Freddy. Interesting. You claim all you two wanted was Arabella, yet the first place Audrey goes is to kill her brother? Maybe if you'd let her hold her daughter, Mal, before tossing her on the aisle like she was something you could just sweep under the rug, Audrey might have had a more maternal bond with our daughter. She wouldn't have given her back, Freddy. You and I both know this, Mal told him. Now, I want you to answer me one question. What? Where is Claudine? Freddy scoffed. Why should I care where that traitor is? Right, that's the first honest thing you've said all night, Mal nodded and looked at the guards. Get him out of my sight. Yes, my lady. The guard nodded and Freddy was manhandled past her. Mal had to assume he would be taken to the cells in either Oridon Prep or Beast Castle, though she was hoping more for Oridon Prep. More people there who could keep an eye on him. Mal, what did you mean when you asked Freddy where Claudine was? Aurora asked once Freddy was out of earshot. Mal sighed. The first thing Ben and I did once we got the alert that Freddy's voice had been heard on the baby monitor was call Claudine. But we just got her machine. Normally I just assumed she was sleeping, but since the whole reason we brought Claudine here was because we were worried Freddy might kill her. Right, Philip nodded. Briar, can you call Claudine's roommate? Macy, I believe her name is. I... I should go check on Phil. Quasimodo's daughter, Aurora nodded. Right, right. I'm on it. Philip sighed and looked at Mal. I assume you know. Audrey's allegedly pregnant again. I didn't, Philip. Mal shook her head as Aurora gasped. I'm guessing Freddy told you to try and mess with your head? Yes. Phil sighed. That... that explains the bump. Aurora whispered. I... I had to knock her out before she... She was aiming right for Phil's heart, Philip. Oh, God! I'm a mother who just had to make the choice between her children. Briar, Briar, you made a choice to save your son, Philip said firmly. If Audrey was also in danger, that'd have been one thing. But, as much as I hate to say it, Audrey was the danger. Philip's right, Mal nodded quickly taking Arabella from his arms. Go on, check on your son. Double check with Macy that Claudine's fine. I can look after Arabella for a bit. Are you sure, Mal? Philip asked. Mal nodded. I do have a younger brother, after all. I'm perfectly fine looking after a baby. Especially a good one, like Arabella. Philip gave Mal a small, sad smile, before making his way to his son's bedroom. Bracing himself for what he might see, he opened the door. Phil? Hey, Dad. Philip Jr. said softly, a makeshift bandage over the wound left by his sister. God, it's probably a good thing Audrey has a lousy aim. I'm pretty sure she was aiming for... for the chest. Or there was a part of her that didn't want to kill you right away. Philip thought, as he walked in picking up his son's phone and setting it on the bedside table. I'm glad she missed them, he said with a small sigh. You need anything for the pain? I don't think meds will do much. Might help you sleep. After the night we all had, it can't hurt. Phil nodded. Okay. You're right, Dad. 
I'll ask one of the servants to bring something right now, Philip told his son, catching the eye of a passing servant, who thankfully seemed to know what he was asking for as he nodded. There was no way he was leaving Phil's side unless he had to. Dad, I'm fine, Phil said, but smiled as his dad sat on the edge of his bed. Audrey, she was lucky she's pregnant. Otherwise, I would have actually done something to her. Gods, that poor kid. Dad, how's Arabella? Audrey said Freddie was going to get her. She was fine. He didn't touch her. Phil said, trying to soothe his agitated son. I made sure of it myself. Thank God, Philip muttered. I mean, I know you wouldn't let anything happen to her, but the idea of him touching my niece. I know. Philip nodded, his voice low. Thankfully, an interruption came by the way of pain medicine for Phil. Bottoms up, Phil. Philip said, handing his son the plastic cup, which was filled to about the one-third masker. Why can they be pills? You can swallow them and not have to deal with the aftertaste. Phil, mu Phil muttered, but down the medicine. God, why can't we find a way to make it taste good? Philip smiled slightly as he got up. Get some rest, Phil. Actually, real quick, have you heard from Claudine? No. I texted her to let her know about Audrey and Freddy. I think I got two words out before Audrey hit me. Phil said, his eyes starting to close, either from the pain or the meds. Philip nodded and brought the blanket up to Phil's chest. Dad, with Audrey pregnant again... Does that mean Mel and I will have to have two kids? Phil sighed, his voice soft. We'll discuss that later, bud. For right now, let's just focus on you recovering from that stab wound, huh? Phil nodded. Mel's... She's been researching baby names. She likes Maya and Perseus. Those are nice names, Philip said. I can see why she got the inspiration. Yeah, I... I like Maya, but I've got my doubts on Perseus, though it's growing on me. I... I have my own ideas, though. Yeah? Philip nodded. Phil nodded. If they're a girl, Madeline. But if they're a boy, well, I was thinking Philip, but I think we've got enough of them, so maybe Parzival? Philip nodded. I like those, but you don't have to worry about that right now. Neither of you do. Not until you turn 18, remember? Focus on recovering, okay? I will, Phil nodded. Do you know where your mother had your sister sent to? Irene to be handcuffed to the bed. I... I wouldn't be surprised if Mal puts her under a sleeping spell to avoid any more trouble. Phil sighed. Is... Is it wrong that I'll miss her? Philip shook his head. Only if it's wrong that I'll miss her too. Get some rest, bud. Hopefully your mother's heard from Claudine so we can all sleep tonight. I'm surprised she hasn't called herself. Phil said softly as he drifted off to sleep. Philip smiled as he walked out, but paused as his son's phone buzzed. It was the second text alert to remind someone that they'd gotten a text. The text was from Claudine's number. Phil? What do you mean? Phil, answer me! Normally, he would never do this, but time was of the essence. Philip quickly opened his son's phone and thanked the gods for his weak security. There, in the most recent text sent from Philip to Claudine, were two words. Two simple words, but they were enough to chill Philip to the core. They're here. Wiping out his phone, Philip dialed Claudine's number, frowning as it went straight to voicemail. Claudine, call me as soon as you get this. I promise we're safe. I just want to know you are too. It wasn't as if many places in Oradon for her to run to, but it wasn't as if she'd go back to the aisle. Would she? End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that one. 
Oh, dramatic. I was looking forward to doing that one, but I didn't realise it was chapter 30. Oh my god, Audrey stabbing her own brother and them going... Oh god, Freddy's mind game with Philip. And the fact that Arabella's old enough to talk, but her first interaction with her birth father is that? Holy moly, keep that poor innocent girl away from this. She's not even a year old. And Phil. Oh, poor boy. And I feel really sorry for Philip as well, because he has to be the strength in this. Also, can we just say... Eugene teaching Aurora how to fight with a frying pan. I wish I could have seen that. That sounds um, imagine if there was a masterclass for it or something. It would be hilarious. Anyway, you guys know the drill. Like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell to be notified for whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night, or whatever time zone you're in. Bye, my guys, guys, and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Take care.